Hey there, hope you're doing well. This is Dallin Seeger with Dallin Seeger Codes, and welcome to the first episode of making a DAW or DA in C Sharp. So we w what will we be using? Well, we're going to be using C Sharp, of course, and uh, Windows Forms, and uh, we will be using the N-Audio API, which is a free and open source API with the MIT license, so that's uh, good and dandy. All right, so in this episode, we are going to be uh, covering basic recording. Uh, so recording at the most fundamental level in the N-Audio API. So here I have an example class set up where we're going to be uh, taking care of this. So uh, the most fundamental class in N-Audio under the hood is going to be uh, probably the Wavestream class. This was uh, the first class implemented uh, according to Mark Heath, the creator. Another two important classes are going to be the Wave In class and the Wave Out class. These are going to take care of input, recording, for example, and output, respectively, playback. All right, so let's dive into this. So first, let's go ahead and create a method called record. All right, so first of all, we're going to want to create an instance of the wave in class. So this wave instance here is going to take care of recording and writing the uh, audio data that we record. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the wave stream class, the wave stream class, which is a, a fundamental <coughs> class under the hood in, in audio, it actually um, uses the same read method uh, that's used in system.stream. If you're familiar with that, you don't need to be. Uh, I was not familiar with it before uh, in audio. Um, and that will essentially uh, write... Uh, the byte data of the audio you're recording. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> with this instance of wave, we're going to go ahead and uh, set a recording device. So zero is going to be the default uh, device number, and we're going to look into uh, switching between uh, different devices uh, in the future. Uh, for now, we're just going to go with the zero. So this assumes you have at least one microphone uh, set uh, plugged in, and that's just going to uh, go to the default uh, input that you have. All right, then we're going to set a wave format. And this is important. If you know anything about uh, digital audio, um, you uh, w you uh, will be familiar with uh, bit depth and sample rate. And we are going to want to set this to 44.1 kilohertz and 16 bit. And then we put in the channels, which is going to be one channel for now. Right, and you can, uh, of course, set the sample rate to whatever you'd like. If you want to set it to 96 kilohertz, we're just going to keep it at 44.1 for now. All right, so now we're going to want to set up a couple of event handlers. So the first event handler is going to be data available. So this means whenever recording uh, data is available, especially, uh, so essentially when you're recording and there's uh, data that can be written, we're going to want to uh, call this event. All right, so plus equals, wave.data available plus equals, and I hit tab. It's going to create this event handler for us. All right, and we're also going to want an, an event handler for when recording is stopped. Perfect. And I'm actually going to switch these around real quick because that just is easier for me to... Now we have these event handlers set up. So now we're going to actually want to write this data that we have. When the data is available, we're going to want to write it to a file. We're going to do the writing here because when data is available, write it to the file, of course. And in order to write this data to a file, we are going to need an instance of the wave file writer class. All right, let's just call this writer. And this is just going to uh, assist us in getting the data from the recording and putting it in an actual wave file, which is the industry standard for uh, file types of recorded audio or audio in general. So we're going to set this equal to a new wave file writer. And this is going to take two parameters, the path, which includes the name of the, of the file, and then the wave format. All right, so one of those parameters is going to be where we're going to store the file. We're just going to store it on the desktop. So let's make a uh, path to the desk. Let's uh, grab the path to the, to the desktop here. Let's just call it the string path to desktop. And we're going to, this isn't going to be an audio. This is going to be... A, uh, code in order to just get the the path to the desktop. So get folder path, 
there we go environment special folder dot desktop perfect so that'll to get us to the desktop so now we can uh, enter the parameters here so path to desktop and actually let's do this string file path equals path to desktop plus and let's just name this file recording example recording perfect all right so now we have path to desktop whoops we have file path here and then we just need a the second parameter here is going to be a wave format so the remember how we set the uh, sample rate bit depth up here we're just going to go ahead and insert that in here so we can just type wave dot wave format perfect all right so we have that writer so now we can go ahead and start recording and uh, currently nothing's going to actually happen nothing's going to be written it's going to be recording but the data is not going to be written to the file yet because when data is available currently nothing is here so we're going to want to grab that instance of the wave file writer here which is a uh, that file we have on the desktop uh, this is the writer perfect so yep like I said this is uh, relating to the file we have on the desktop uh, named example recording uh, do I have an extra semicolon there yep uh, parentheses all right so we're going to want to type writer dot write and my mistake I actually realized we are since this is a local variable that's created here uh, we're going to want to move this up here down here we're going we can do writer dot write so write the data and uh, since the event args is e this is what's being passed into the event handler you don't need to understand exactly what uh, this is just go ahead and copy this down perfect all right this is essentially just going to write the data that we have into the actual file here and finally all we need to do is when recording is stopped which it currently actually will never stop because we would need to have a button set up in order to stop the recording I'm going to keep this that this uh, pretty simple here so let's pretend we have a button and also yeah let's just pretend we have a button public stop recording recording that when you press it it just stops recording all right, so when you press a button like stop recording, it will call this method. And then here we can have wave dot stop recording. And let's go ahead and move this up here as well. So we can, uh, so it's not a local variable. Perfect. All right, so then we stop recording and when then this will be called so when we stop recording we're just going to want to dispose of that writer okay perfect so recording should be all set up now so to test this out let's go ahead and just create a constructor for this class and let's call the record method as soon as this class is it class is instantiated and uh, here I have uh, I've done quite a bit of work on this application already so we're just going to go ahead and ignore this and uh, I'm just going to go straight to this example that we made here from scratch and I'm just going to instantiate um, an instance of that class. So let's do example. Perfect. And that should start recording. So now we're going to go ahead and boot up the program. And what do you know, silly me, I did forget, uh, in fact, to put the dot wave at the end here. So new recording dot wave. You are going to want to add a dot wave uh, at the end of this here. All right, perfect. So let's give that another try. Actually, just. All right, so I was able to go ahead and uh, get a file recorded. I did have to uh, stop uh, the recording of this video because the audio was uh, conflicting with the software. So let's go ahead and pull this up. This is a test recording with the code we just made. All right, perfect, so uh, it's working. And I did go ahead and um, one thing that is important to note is with the application here, I did go ahead and um, this stop button here I actually tied it with the stop recording uh, method here so that uh, this would call the stop recording because it is important to make sure the recording stops uh, just uh, to be safe 
All right. So uh, that does conclude uh, the first episode. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Feel free to uh, comment below if you have any questions. Uh, thank you for watching. This has been Dallas Eager Codes.